I'm excited to say that the Wang Gang property number two is completely done. This all began in the beginning of this year. I was looking for a rental property to buy. Um, it took me a few months. In May, I found something. I put in an offer. It got accepted. And, um, you know, that's where the journey began after that. Um, I took six plus months now to rehab everything. And, um, and now I kind of want to go in summary of my budget, um, how much money I'll be making off this, uh, this place, um, some of the ups and downs that I went through. So you guys don't have to go through the same thing. And for anybody that doesn't know, I am Bruce Wang. I am a dividend investor, real estate investor turned YouTuber. And in today's video, I'm going to go over everything I've learned, the mistakes I've made. So you guys don't have to make the same mistakes. So this is going to be the eighth video I made from the Wang Gang property. And in the links in the description, I'm going to leave a playlist there so you guys can watch from the beginning of when I first, uh, you know, bought the place all the way um, through the rehabs and all the, you know, issues I've had until now. And today is just going to be a little summary video so I can just like share my experiences with you. So if you guys want to watch it from the beginning, links are going to be in the description. So this is it, man. This is going to be my moneymaker for the next um, 20, 30 so years. I hopefully I don't have to do any renovations on it, you know, anytime soon because I basically did a complete renovation of the entire property. And um, this is a duplex. One unit is bigger than the other. Um, one unit is like three bedrooms, two bath. The other is like two bedrooms and one bath. Uh, the bigger unit, I'm getting 1600 every single month. The smaller unit, I'm getting about 1400 every single month. So when it comes to rents, that's $3,000 every single month. $36,000 every single year. When I first purchased this property, I bought it for $270,000. Give or take a few thousand for closing fees and, you know, paying my, um, my attorney and everything like that. And uh, when it comes to the renovations, it cost about, in the beginning, it was at $40,000. Um, during the middle of it, it cost about $50,000. And towards the end, it was nearing almost $60,000 in renovations. So... In total, everything cost me about $330,000 off the top of my head. Um, that is the really close estimate of exactly how much I spent. So if you saw my last video where I did like a comparison of before and after, you can really see the difference that I made to this, this place. I wasn't trying to do anything fancy, tearing down walls and all that. Like when it comes to rentals, you don't need to do that at all. But if you're thinking about flipping houses or... Um, you know, doing a house for yourself to add value to your house. Maybe that's when you can start tearing down walls. But when it comes to a rental, all you really need to do is just make it habitable, make it safe, make it clean. And, you know, just try your best to keep your costs low and um, to make the best returns that you can. So some of the biggest issues with this place that I had was separating the utilities. That is probably what took me the longest and what was um, one of the most expensive parts of the uh, this property um, when it comes to the gas meters in this place it only had one gas meter when it first started and then um, I had to split that basically so both so I wouldn't have to pay the utilities I want the tenants to pay for their own utilities that's just how it goes in my area uh, tenant always is gonna be paying for electricity and gas in my area unless like you have a really old old um, rental property but in summary it took about two months almost three months to get just the gas line, just to get the gas meters done and to separate the gas um, and to separate the gas pipes from both units. So when I first started on the rehab, I underestimated what I had to do for this place. Um, that's gonna be very typical for uh, most investors, most uh, beginner investors. You're gonna think that, oh man, I want to make this place the most incredible place ever, but just remember that you're not living there. You're going to be renting out to somebody else and you know just that's how it is sometimes like where the person that you rent to they're not gonna you know treat this place like their own place they're just gonna treat this place like a rental place um you're gonna they typically sign a one-year lease and you know one after one year they might just disappear and never return some of the things that i overspent on was the appliances in this unit everything is stainless steel everything looks good if i got used stainless steel appliances i could have saved maybe one thousand to $1,500 and uh, that is something that I should have done but you know so it's better to learn this now and buy used appliances when it comes to your rental properties unless you're doing like a luxury type of rental property most likely you're not if you're going to be a beginner 
Um, so that's what I recommend for you guys to do. So if you guys know anything about me, I'm not the type of guy that runs everything through spreadsheets. I do keep track of, you know, expenses and stuff, but I'm not the type of guy that can just give you the exact numbers of everything. So, you know, if something needs to get fixed, I just fix it and I try to, you know, conserve and be as practical about the cost as I can, um, such as the roof, for instance. Uh, this roof was pretty messed up. In the beginning, I thought that I could just go maybe another year or two years with the same roof, but I had to get that replaced and that cost around $7,000. So that was one of the bigger expenses. Another big expense was the uh, the driveway. The driveway costs around $4,000 to get done. The thing about the driveway is that it only takes one day to get it done, but it takes around five days to let everything cure. So make sure if you're going to do a brand new driveway, do not drive your car on it. Just let it cure, let it harden for at least four to five days. If you can do it longer than that, um, great. That's one thing that I've learned. Don't mess up your driveway by um, putting your car on top of it um, too soon, especially in the summer times because it's a lot hotter and it takes a lot longer to um, harden and cure. This is a quick before and after again. Um, really messed up house when I first started and now it looks bright, it looks beautiful and people can actually live in it now without complaining too much. Um, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. Um, I'm, I'm not happy by going over my budget of like $50,000. So when it comes to my return on investments with this property, I'm going to get around 10% return on my investments. And that is pretty good for my area because my area is very competitive. Um, a lot of people in my area are cash buyers and they would just, they would just buy everything in cash. It's crazy how uh, they don't even need to refinance. So um, yeah, this is definitely a seller's market. I'm definitely in a seller's market right outside of Boston. And um, being able to get a 10% return on any of the real estate investments in my area is pretty decent already. And that's one thing, and that's one thing I learned about investing in real estate is you don't have to buy the best property out there. You just need to buy something that is decent. And when I'm saying decent, um, you know, 7% gain, 7% return on investment is all right as well. Just make sure that the rents that you get every single month covers your expenses for that property. That is the bare minimum that you have to be able to do. And uh, you should be able to invest in all types of real estate if you can do that. Um, obviously, it's better if you can, uh, you know, get rents that are a lot higher than your expenses. But for beginners out there, as long as you just buy a decent deal that um, your rents cover your expenses, you're going to be, you can really call yourself a real estate investor after that. So one question that I get asked a lot is what if my tenant doesn't pay rent? That's the one thing that scares a lot of investors out of, um, you know, even trying to invest in real estate with that, you know, if you're scared that your tenants are not going to pay you rent, then I don't think that you're going to be a good real estate investor. So with the experience that I've had with um, you know, commercial real estate and residential real estate, I would say about 80% of the people out there, they're just going to pay their rent and be relatively a good tenant. And there's only going to be, and the other 20%, they're going to give you some problems. They're going to pay rent late. That happens all the time. You know, that's, uh, that's just how it goes when it comes to um, being in the real estate business. So just don't worry about it. Most people out there, they're, they're good people. Um, there's only a handful of people that are going to be malicious. Another question that I get is how do I find good tenants or, you know, how do I start the process and build my systems? For me, I'm using Zillow Rental Manager. That is the best option and the beginner friendliest option that I know of. So I list all my properties on Zillow. You know, I find my tenants on Zillow. I do my, um, I do my lease myself. Um, I have a, um, my real estate agent gave me a lease, a, like a standard lease to use. Um, and I collect payments on Zillow. So that's what I'm doing for all my properties. I'm trying not to collect cash as I can or trying to do as many transactions like person to person. If all my tenants can do three, if all my tenants can do everything online, that's just beautiful for me. All, I'm collecting my rents through Zillow payments. Um, it's completely free if they're doing bank to bank. And um, if the tenant wants to pay their rent in a credit card or something like that, they can do that, but they charge a fee for that. Um, you know, that's letting the tenants pay their rents however way they want. That's um, that's on them. That I let them do that as long as I, I'm able to collect the rent every single month on time. So for the last two weeks, I've been grinding it out. That's why I haven't been posting any videos. I think I posted two videos in the last two weeks. 
um, trying to find the perfect tenant, basically. Um, there's not gonna be any perfect tenants out there, but you try your best, well, I try my best. And one thing I've used is Facebook Marketplace. And through this, I got so many leads. So let's take a look here. Um, this is the listing for the smaller unit. I got over five, almost 6,000 views in my, in this area alone. Just think about 6,000 different people looking at one listing. And when it comes to inquiries, I got 230 text messages. So my phone had been, has been blowing up for the last two weeks. I actually kept it on silence. So I don't get like notified throughout, uh, you know, when I'm sleeping and everything like that. And uh, it was pretty annoying, but um, you know, I have like a dedicated, I have a list of questions I asked them. And um, you know, a lot of them are not even gonna be able to answer a lot of these questions like, what's your credit score? What's your monthly income and stuff like that. So if you guys are looking for tenants and stuff like that, I really recommend searching the marketplace on uh, Facebook. I'll, I'll leave all the questions that I asked from my screening in the, in the links in the description. Uh, so you guys can go find that there. Uh, I think that would be really helpful, especially if like um, you're trying to get new tenants for your property. The first week that I started listing, I actually charged 1700 and 1500 respectively. And I did not get that many um, leads. That's why I was looking for different ways to get more people interested so I can find better tenants. If I had a bigger pool of tenants to choose from, most likely I'm gonna find uh, the best tenant possible. So that's why I decided to lower the rents by $100 for each unit. And um, you know, later down the line, if my rentals are still under market value, I could just, you know, raise up the price on the lease after uh, after the lease is over. Yeah, after the lease is over, I can raise up $25, $50. And uh, if my tenants are awesome, if they're amazing, never give me any problems, I could just, most likely I'm just gonna leave the rents as is. And that is because I want the tenants to stay and not give me any problems. And one last thing is that you're gonna get a lot of stories. You're gonna get a lot of people telling you, you know, their sob stories and sometimes they're true, sometimes, you know, they're false. And uh, one thing that I tried to do was not listen to the story because, because what matters are the numbers, what matters are what the, you know, references say. And that is what, and that is how you're gonna find the best tenants. The best tenants are gonna have like very bland stories like, hey, I need a place to live because this is closer to where I work and it's gonna be a lot more convenient. You want a story like that. You don't want a story where, you don't wanna hear stories like, I need to move really fast. In my place, I have cockroaches, I have rats, I need to just get out right away. You don't wanna hear stories like that because what I've noticed is that anybody who's having cockroach issues or rats issues, they might, they could potentially bring those cockroach issues into your new place that you just fixed up. So uh, yeah, just make sure you check the numbers. Um, the stories are cool and all, you can listen to them. They're, they're really funny to tell. I have a bunch of stories I can tell you guys, but I think it's, uh, I don't know if it's illegal for me to tell you, but um, yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into too much of that. Uh, I might be able to do that in another video. So hopefully by watching my journey, uh, you guys can get more confidence into, you know, wanting to do real estate yourself. A lot of these problems, they could be easily solved with just like typing into Google, typing into YouTube and finding other, other people having the same issues and how they solve them. So the main thing is just taking action, going out there and you know looking for places and finally being able to buy a place. Um, if you guys wanna watch more videos from me, go check out these videos here and here. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching the Wang Gang property number two journey. Uh, this is gonna be the end of it. Bye bye.